Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday, November 3rd, and that means it is time for another Knowledge Bolide Hangout sponsored by Topher Spin Meteorites. The subject for today, deep dive, uh, Meteorite 101 class is Howardites. Um, so we're going to have Mike Kelly give a nice presentation on Howardites, and we have a bunch of media from around the globe. I had the great fortune this morning to do something I absolutely love to do. I was invited for the first time, and I think I'll be going back annually. Um, big thanks to Miss um, Ponicki's class, both of her sixth grade science classes today. I was able to give a presentation on meteorites, and then everyone left with a free sample. Uh, it was just an amazing experience to have uh, bright minds eager for bright and early in the morning. They were very eager to learn about meteorites. And uh, a lot of them, it was the first time obviously seeing meteorites in person. Um, so I, I hope to go back again and I hope teachers share my name and I can get more invites because it's all about inspiring the next generation. Um, I figured I'd give you a quick little show of what I brought to, to show off in addition to my presentation. So this was the show and tell part of it. I bet they will really appreciate seeing these samples. Got a large chondrite slice, a nearly complete chondrite. Chondrite showing the interior. We have a large Nantan slice. Followed by a nice sli slice of uh, Brenham. Actually, it's an end cut of Brenham. Then when you move up to uh, achondrites, a 43 gram hunk of Mars, a 20 gram hunk of the moon, a very important aquazarcus, and finally, the anomalous Erd check. So I'm hoping the students will appreciate the education and introduction, mm. and hopefully our next generation of collectors will be introduced tomorrow. But uh, I don't think anyone's talked about some of the cooler stuff about Hobo besides the fact that, you know, obviously it's the world's largest single piece of meteorite at 60 tons. And the other interesting thing about Hobo too, is you go, okay, well, it's a 60 ton meteorite, the biggest in the world, where's the crater? Um, and there's none, you know, it's just sitting there, it was buried in a field, no, no crater at all. Um, and one of the thoughts behind that is potentially that it is a very large tabular flat piece of, of iron. Uh, and they're wondering if it almost kind of skipped across the atmosphere. And then I guess also across the, uh, the ground as it impacted, uh, almost like a stone skips on water. If you're moving that fast and you're that flat. I want to introduce uh, a friend of mine, uh, Roberto Vargas. And I do call him my friend because... We are friends. How are you, buddy? Doing well, Topher. Good. How's everyone doing tonight? So 13456 is listed in Metbull as a C2. Um, not to be confused with C2 ungrouped. This is kind of this is what it looks like. So that's the back side. But if you look, it's it's carbonaceous. And this stuff is is smelly. Um <laughs> It definitely gives off um, the smell of hydrocarbons. You'd expect it to be, um, and that color, you'd kind of expect it to be a CM. Oxygen isotope studies have been done on it, and um, it plots nowhere near uh, CM. We bought it at, at 142 grams. Um, now it's at 102 grams. Um, that right there is um what we believe to be a cai along the top of it Ooh, cool um i live in ohio and my young meteorite collection is already suffering from the climate here so just today actually uh this guy arrived it's a nice uh, desiccator box wow. got a couple things of dust kit in the bottom i'm gonna add some more but um you know, it, it, it looks the piece, it, it displays the stuff nicely, but most importantly, it's going to keep anything with iron in it that I have from, uh, you know, turning into brown dust. So I was pretty proud of that. It's a nice eBay find. You should be. That's yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. It is awesome. I think is... that is a carbonaceous inclusion. Oh, lucky dog. 
And I think this one has a reasonable chance of going primitive. When so you when you say primitive, you, you mean what? To a subtype of type three. Gotcha. This is not a slice. This is a whole rock. Wow. Wow. Uh, by going to f stop 25, um, the um, depth of field and focus is considerably better. Um, the occasional big conger. Oh, Jeez. Oof. Good <laughs> lord. Seven yeah, a there's a nice bleach chondral right there in the dead center. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, there, there's uh, a few in this in this slice. Uh, and the, the big chondral is about seven and a half millimeters across. And this displays one of the other cool things about reflect across polarized light. So right now we're at extinction. And as we rotate out a little bit, you notice these two big troll light inclusions will start getting a lot more structure and detail inside. It's 1.2 grams. But as they say in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. Uh, oh, man. Oh, I, I um, have achieved Antarcticness. So I have Allen Hills A76009, a 1.2 gram. Major jealous. It looks yeah, like it's a good size piece. Oh. It's a silicated iron. Ooh. Probably mm. one of my favorites. Um, 176? Yeah, NWA yeah. 176. Yeah. Hey, here's nice. I recently picked up a few Lunars, but this was one that I, I really wanted to get because it was, um, there's like evidence of aqueous alteration. Mm -hmm. um, so basically water on the moon, which I, think is, which I think is pretty cool for a Lunar and it's an end cut. And now uh, we're going to hand it over to our resident educator. Mike, if you would, please take us through Howardites. A little bit of the history on it. Um, so the Howardites were added to meteorite classification um, by Gustav Rose, who we talked about before. He was one of the uh, early pioneers of, of classifying meteorites. Uh, and he named him in honor of Edward Howard, who I had mentioned before as being the chemist who uh, went ahead and assessed uh, the Cape of Good Hope meteorite. The Howardites are uh, a brecciated type of meteorite, uh, and so their major components are actually uh, eucritic and diagenetic material. Uh, so that means they contain a lot of pyroxene in the form of orthopyroxene, uh, like we saw with the diagenites, and also uh, sodium-poor plagioclase, which is a major constituent of the eucrites. The, the body number, so there are a total of 403 right now Howardites and metpoles. Um, uh, I know... Uh, Topher just mentioned one, uh, Sirasic, uh, that is one of 18 falls. Um, so there are not all that many falls. Howardites are the only asteroidal achondrite regoliths that we have. Um, so if you look up regolith in uh, Metbol, uh, you're going to get 105 hits, and uh, majority of that is lunar. Uh, obviously, the lunar felled spathic breccias are um, basically a, a regolith soil from uh, the moon. I did that double. Um... That double etch routine I was telling you about. Yeah. And here's the results. Nice. There you go. So, yeah, it came out pretty nice. It's um, it's not the prettiest rock in the world, but look at the contrast in this thing. Yeah. I mean, it just it just you know the first the first etch brought out a nice contrast, but man, the second etch was wow. It made all the difference in the world. Let's check in with the Bruce man. How are you? Doing well. So here's my uh, slice of Howardite. Oh, NWA yeah. 12227, which I actually got from Topher. Yeah, it's got a little everything. It's like there's black, there's white, there's brown. There's like, like the diagonal crystals. Spot. Yeah, there's a couple little spots, I think. Sarita check. Sarita check. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, the Turkish witness fall. Yes. Yeah. And actually the label on it still says bingo because I got it after the fall before it was classified in Tucson. And this is the beautiful side. Whoa. Woo! <laughs> yeah. yeah. You were holding out on us. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> so this is still 
Sarah Sisek. Oh, nice. Wow, it's very fine grained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was my first thought as well. It's super fine grained. It just looks like a miniature little Howardite. This is the NWA 12227. And it's a uh, wow. crusted. Nice. Yeah. The inclusions in that one are amazingly colorful, too. Um, this is an unclassified Howardite. And it is very friable. As you can see, there's dust on the inside of the, of the frame. This mm -hmm. is one that you don't really want to take out and touch too much. Uh, Juan Aviles Pobladar of uh, Jurassic Dreams. Oh, yeah. If you notice there in a the corner, it says gift. You're looking at a 154 gram complete Howardite, a gift from my friend after staying at the Meteorite Mansion. Wow. Nice. So this is my decent sized piece of Howardite. Um, nice. So this one is NWA 8362. Um, so you can see this was the 14th piece I ever got when I started collecting. Nice. Uh, before I became a subtype guy, uh, this was like, hey, I'm going to get just one of the top types and be done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, sure. I'm going to take the majority of this down by hand, and then I'm going to go throw it on the petrothin and, and really bring it down to about uh, like 10 microns above where it should be. And then I'll take it back off the petrothin uh, when it's darn close and I haven't gr wasted the wheel too much, and I'll finish it with hand lapping. Damian from Croatia with his uh, with his video of the week. NWA six seven zero four. Shown here in the middle, surrounded by my other ungrouped achondrites. <laughs> One side I've left with the original rough surface. The back side I've carefully hand polished really? to better observe the structure. Wow. Crystals are mostly olivine and autopyroxene. In cross polarized light, a few metal inclusions can also be seen. Next is a wonderful gift from my friend Rolf. It's a very nice, unclassified, ordinary chondroid slice. I would guess an H5. That's getting down in there. I know. God. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Next is a beautiful Itki fragment I got from Pierre Malerie Pelle. It's a beautiful mixture of metal grains and anstatite crystals showing triple junctions. Wow. This last one is very interesting and I would like your opinion. Oh. To me, it looks like definitely a chondrite and possibly a primitive one. The structure looks actually similar to some brachinites mm -hmm. or possibly a urolite. Thank you, Damian. Really appreciate it, buddy. Hello, everyone. Hello from Germany. I hope you're all doing good. Yeah, as I promised, I uh, prepared another piece that I bought at the Munich show. I don't know if uh, some of you guys know or noticed, um, I'm interested in oriented meteorites. <laughs> but what I like more than oriented meteorites are unusual oriented meteorites. <laughs> it's a 154 gram NWA chondrite. It's unclassified. And as you can see here on that side, there are radial flow lines beginning from the left hand side of the piece following to the right hand side of the piece. This is really the cool part of that stone because at the end of the flow lines, you will definitely or you can definitely find a rollover loop. I hope you like my little oriented arrowhead here. <laughs> yeah, I think such pieces are really interesting because they're not, yeah, usual heat shields or usual mm -hmm. um, nose cone oriented pieces. 
So um, yeah, but they tell a story and you can definitely see how this stone flew during the atmospherical entry. I have a question uh, from viewers that we need to ask Professor Pat if he's available. The question was, uh, does metal in, um, you know, the high metal chondrites and just chondrites in general, uh, if one were to uh, uh, grind, polish, uh, and etch, uh, would one find Vidmastan patterns or Thompson uh, structure? We see Vidmastan pattern and Thompson structure because uh, metal, uh, the, the nickel iron metal, had a chance to cool very, very slowly. And that cooling rate is somewhere between, you know, 150 years per degree C at the fastest and about 10,000 uh, years per degree C in the slowest. We do see those uh, Vidmastan patterns or Thompson uh, lines in uh, the palisite meteorites because they live at the border between the core and the mantle of uh, a failed planetesimal. And that one is super high metal. It's like 76% or something like that metal where mm. an H chondrite will end at like 30%, give or take, you know. I apologize that we didn't get to everyone that wanted to show and tell today, but we are at our time limit. But have a great week, everyone. Thanks a lot. Hey, everybody. See you next Bye. Week. Thanks,